Hi, I'm Nicola, and this summer I decided to get into a very fun project and I built my first rocket. You can see here the avionics power section and thrust vector mount. And it basically stabilizes itself by rotating the motor around two axes. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built the different sections of the rocket, uh, what mistakes I did, what could be done better in the future, and what I learned since it was my first time doing it. The concept of this project is to basically use our gyroscope sensor located in the flight computer to sense at what angle we are located from the vertical and at what angular velocity we are going. And by using a PID controller algorithm, we can calculate to what angle we should rotate the motor to stabilize ourselves. To get the rocket's orientation, I will integrate the gyroscope angular velocities over time to get the yo and pitch angle. That is not the best method, since if we get some roll during flight, we'll get inaccurate results for these two angles, but I will be able to fix that through better calculations in the future. I chose not to use the gravity vector coming from the accelerometer, because during flight, we are actually accelerating upwards, adding another vector to the gravity vector. So we wouldn't have any meaningful data about where the Earth's surface is. The best way would be to use a Kalman filter, and I will surely do it in the future. The mission architecture will consist of sending a launch signal to the rocket by using this ground radio station. Then the rocket will go into calibration mode to eliminate any gyro drift and then it will close the igniter circuit located in the launch pad. Then during flight, the thrust vector mount will take care of the rocket's orientation and the rocket will send some signals to the ground station about its current state. And where the barometer detects the altitude decreasing, it will open the parachute deployment system. This whole time, the ST card slot will record flight data for later data analysis. Just like in this clip right here, I have to find a way to move my motor around. So after many iterations, I came up with this design that uses two 9G servos and some iron wire as the actuators to rotate the motor around first this axis and then around this axis. The various parts were printed in PLA plastic using my A1 mini printer. The servo gets inserted here and by using these pins that don't provide that much friction, we assemble the parts together. By using some iron wire as the actuator, we connect the servo and the printed parts. And with some screws, we secure the servo in. We can insert the servo right here and secure the cable in this slot I printed. And we can insert the other pins to secure the outer and inner part in place and cut the extra iron wire. And this is the final TVC mount that we can assemble to the avionics part. This is the adapter for the motor that gets inserted. The purpose of the adapter is to be able to slide in and out with the TVC mount. So when the motor's ejection charge goes off, it will slide out without breaking any part of the TVC mount. The TVC mount is not that sturdy and it can wobble a bit, but I figured it could have been enough for my first flight. I also tested the thrust vector mount strength by tying some weights to it according to how much thrust I expected from the motor. I used the TSP E20 motor and its peak thrust is 35 newtons, but I still went up to 6 kilograms of weight and it could sustain them for several seconds. But to have full control over the rocket motor's rotation, we need to notice that a 5 degree rotation of the rocket motor does not correspond to a 5 degree rotation of the servo motor, so the relationship is non-linear, as you can see in this graph. So by using Desmos and doing some trigonometry, I came up with this Arduino function that translates motor angle to servo angle, so our flight computer knows actually to what angle bring the servo motors to to accomplish a certain rotation. For the electronics, I chose the Arduino Nano as the microcontroller unit and it's the place where the code is stored and where all the calculations take place. For the sensors, I chose the MPU6050 as the accelerometer and gyroscope, the BMP180 as the barometer, a micro SD card module and then this radio transmitter and receiver. To make the board, I use one of these earth boards, try to arrange all the components on it, then I drew a wiring scheme to help me soldering the parts and after making all of the connections, I was very glad that it worked. 
I also designed this board, which is connected to the batteries and contains three switches. The first one powers the electronics, the second one powers the thrust vector mount, and the third one arms the motor. The batteries can also be replaced by lifting this lid. I printed this modular housing for the batteries and for the board, and they connect to each other and to the thrust vector mount by using these printed pins, so if something breaks, it can easily be replaced. Then, to get my controller algorithm parameters, I use this software called Simlink to build this physical system which includes the rocket, the motors rotating, and also air drag and gravity. And to give you an insight, here I characterize the motor rotation by using first a saturation block which bounds how much the motor can rotate, a rate limiter which bounds the speed at which it can rotate, a transport delay which simulates the fact that my servo motors update every 20 milliseconds, and the quantizer block which turns a continuous input into a step-like signal. To get the simulations right, I also had to find the rocket's moment of inertia and I did that by tying the rocket to a tree, measure the oscillation time and then using some formulas to find the actual moment of inertia. When simulating a physical system like this, it's also important to input some disturbances such as sensor noise or motor misalignment or even wind trying to flip your rocket around so you get a closer representation of what will happen during flight. The parachute deployment system will be implemented in the rocket's nose cone and will contain the folded parachute and it will be able to open thanks to two 9G servos located inside of it that can pull and push the two halves thanks to some iron wire. This is also a small table I designed for the parachute to sit on and where there will be a spring to push the parachute out. That was made out of a shower curtain, some duct tape, some cords and a shock cord that gets tied to this metal part and then screwed to this other part where the servo cables will go through and then get connected to the flight computer. Then we can assemble these parts together with some pins and here we have the full parachute deployment system that we will screw to the rocket's body by using these holes. The static test is a good way to judge my rocket's stability, so I built this test track by using some metal parts bought from the hardware store, and then I designed and printed these parts that connect both to the rack and to the rocket, and they let the rocket rotate freely around its center of mass. And I also tested their strength so they wouldn't break. I also placed the ignition system on the test track, and it basically consists of two 9 volt batteries in parallel, and the relay switch that connects to these three cables coming from the rocket and then to the rocket's igniter. I also placed an onboard camera in the rocket by cutting a small window in the PVC tube. And after assembling the flight computer and the nose cone to the rocket and balancing it on the test track, we can attach some safety cords and weight the test track down and we are ready for testing. But I had four misfires. The first one, I couldn't get the motor to ignite with the stock igniters that were just a nickel chromium wire coil. The second time, I tried using some matches and that didn't work either. The third time, I dipped the nickel chromium wire coil in some flash powder paste, but again, the motor didn't ignite. The fourth time, I made this flammable paste by dissolving nitrocelluloid plectrums into acetone and then I dipped the nichrochromium wire and flash powder igniters into that but that didn't work either I think because the rocket chamber didn't reach the right pressure and temperature levels and what ended up working was using some green fuse dipped in the same nitrocelluloid paste I made before and this igniter burned for longer, so I think it could reach a higher temperature and higher pressure in the chamber. And that is a lot, the rocket's ignition. So here's the actual first test footage. For it being the first test, I consider that a huge success and also looking at the flight data, we can see the control system, even if not perfect, is doing some work. In fact, the first spike is caused by the metal bar bending, but then the oscillations are decreasing, meaning the thrust vectoring is working. And since the oscillation amplitude kept really small towards the end, I thought I was good to go for the first flight. And 
after building the launch pad that contained the ignition system and a small camera looking upwards, I headed towards the launch site, tested the radio, plugged the igniter and armed the motor. And after closing the rocket with this panel, leaving this open part, I was ready for launch. And here's how it went. The flight went really well, the rocket lifted off, the thrust factory kept the rocket pointing upwards and the parachute deployed, even if with a rough landing that broke the nose cone hinges. Also some great improvements can be made to the control system, in fact you can see the rocket wiggling when ascending and that can be improved with better angle estimates, better control system tuning and even with the roll control implementation in the rocket. What could be done better in the future is also making a printed circuit instead of soldering this one and also using a more powerful microcontroller since I almost ran out of memory of the Arduino Nano. Another thing that didn't go quite well was that when the rocket was pointing this way the airflow was coming straight to this window into the barometer Hiring the pressure inside here and making the barometer think the altitude decrease and it could have triggered the parachute deployment system even if it didn't end up doing that because it skipped the altitude checks. But overall it was awesome to see something I put a lot of effort into actually working and that motivates me to learn and experiment even more for future projects. And I thank you for watching the whole video.